All right, guys, this is my last video. I was going to read um, the rest of the helper, but uh, I think I'll read that to you probably sometime tomorrow, the rest of the helper. Um, I want to give you some definitions because we're still doing our fast. It's going to be until 1230. Hang in there, guys. You can do it. You know, get you some coffee. If you can't drink it black, but a little, little bit of a sweetener, you're not supposed to have a sweetener, but I use a cream with a sweetener and some milk because I have not gotten used to just the black coffee with the lemon in it. But uh, next week, I would say that maybe in, in this, I'm just starting this, it's like my first week. So maybe in about two or three weeks, I'm gonna transition into uh, a black coffee with a flavor and some lemon or lime to get out of the bitter but i have to buy what flavor i like you know an unsweetened flavor because i don't want to be putting a creamer in a you know just a black coffee with an unsweetened flavor so if i drink a milk or have sour cream all of that count you know i don't want to be putting milk in my coffee too you know i just want the coffee black because i don't want to break my fast and i know that i rely on coffee quite often so i'm gonna i want to transition to black with a flavor and some lemon or lime to knock out the bitter. So I'm going to be trying to do that uh, starting the end of next week. I'm going to get off this little sugar and cream thing. But I'm successful. So far, I haven't eaten. I got this big, gigantic thing of water, and it's about right here. So I got the whole day to get it all the way down. So I'm okay with that. What I want to give you is a definition because you need to know what we're doing. Let me see how many steps I did so far. See, I like this because it can tell you what, where you at. I, mean, I got 279 steps. That's just walking around the house. I'm trying to get to 3,000. By the end of the day, I don't know how many I'm going to get to, you know. But if I don't get to the 3,000, I'm not going to be like bad on myself or nothing. I'll just try to 3,000 the next day. Or I just keep going until it get to the 3,000, you know. I'm not going to feel bad about it. Uh, never feel bad about something that you set as a goal and you didn't quite get there. You just keep chugging away, you know. Keep yourself motivated and keep chugging away. So <clears throat> what I wanted to give you guys is a few definitions. Because what we're doing is an awesome thing. It's going to really help us. But you're going to have to be very focused in order to get it done. Now... Um, the definition of discipline, um, I'm going to give you a definition because you're going to need some discipline to do these fasts. We are we right now doing Wednesday and Friday, 16 hours, which we do at bedtime. If you sleep at eight hours or six hours, that's when your fast is starting at your bedtime. Then the next day, you're doing a, the rest of the eight hours throughout the day. Like whatever time you get up, you say, okay, whatever time I went to bed, this is how many hours I slept. I know I got to get 16 hours in. I sleep about seven hours. So I know that I woke up early. So I got to do my fast about 1230, probably 130, something like that. But when I come off, I'm going to have probably just some eggs for lunch, just some eggs and um, I don't know. Just probably some eggs. And then uh, then for dinner, I'm going to make me uh, some pork chop and salmon. I got like two pieces of pork chop and two pieces of salmon. So I'm going to make a dinner uh, for us to have enough on the plate, you know, because we're just eating meat. So I'm going to do a salmon and a pork chop for him and a salmon and pork chop for me. And that's it. You know, he gets to eat lunch today. He can have some leftover fish because I made some fish yesterday. I also made... Um, chili and i made some rolled up tamales yesterday i had some chili in the can and i gave him <clears throat> two tamales with some chili on it i made four or five tamales i had in a pot over there yesterday for dinner so we didn't eat that so i'm gonna give him that when he wake up he's gonna have leftover catfish with tamale and chili it's because i can't eat you know i can't eat until lunchtime, and i'm just gonna make some eggs for my lunch i gotta eat some but i'll probably eat that about one o'clock now, back to what I'm saying. Discipline is the virtue that allows a person to exercise self-control. I can't wait to go get my eyes checked. I need some glasses bad. I got to get these eyes checked. So discipline is a virtue and it helps 
you, it allows you, it helps you to exercise the control of your own body and of your own uh, everything, whatever you have, your emotions, your nature, your abilities, your body discipline is a virtue. Now, it is also a fruit of the spirit discipline, and it's a subject of the Bible, you know, a discipline, you know, because, you know, Jesus Christ was able to discipline himself not to eat when the devil tempted him with food after he fast for 40 days he was able to to say get thee behind me devil or man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of the father so he told the devil that because that's what the bible said so that it's thus says the bible when you have something that's coming against your discipline you quote the scripture over it whatever that is coming against your discipline for something. Now, we are fasting. I'm dealing with my taste because I have a certain taste bud. I like a sweet taste on my tongue. I don't like nothing bitter. I like sweet, I like spice, and I like flavor. So I'm trying to tone my taste buds down. So there's a scripture for taste. I'm pretty sure I got to look it up and see, but I'm going to need to find it because I'm going to need to use it. Um, taste is a sensation perceived in the mouth on contact of a substance. I wanted you to hear that. Taste is a sensation perceived in the mouth on contact of something you eat, something that you, you put on your tongue. That's what taste is. And taste is subjective to the person. Some people can taste bitter coffee and say it's not bitter. And some can taste the coffee and say, oh, that is very bitter. Some have different smell sensation. They can smell something and say, oh, that's a very sweet aroma. And another person can say, oh, that's terrible. That's a, a, a musky, a musky aroma. Or I don't like that, you know. So taste, smell is subjective to the person. The way that you taste something, the way that you smell something, your senses are just subject to how you feel. So there are scriptures for these things because these things are the things that tempt you to, to, to bring you in, make you become undisciplined, so to speak, or you fall into that thing and, and give in to it. But what, what fasting is doing for us, we're only doing it 16 hours twice a week, that's right now for this 30 days. The next uh, the next 30 days, we're going to pick up to do more. We're going to do more days of 16 hours. We're going to be doing like four days a week where I didn't cut you down to two meals a day. Right now, we're on three meals a day and then two meals a day on the two days that you fast. But when we get up to the next month in March, probably like mid-March, we're going to be down to four days of 16 hours where you're eating two meals on those four days and then the rest of the week you can eat your three meals a day of course they're all just meat you know but that's in the future so i don't want to get off the topic i want to stay on the topic taste is subject is subject to the person how you smell something or you taste something i'm going to tell you something else some people can see things different than others see things because sometimes their eyes are bad but most people like when you go to court they say we all seen the same thing right you know that's how that's how the lawyer be you have you have you watched any judge shows watch some attorney shows when they got the whole amount of people there the jury they want to know how each one of those people see the object that comes across or whatever because that object the way that they see it is what the uh, attorney has got his whole case based on. How did you see it? How did you understand it? And if they all agree, that's how they win the case. You know, whatever the, the situation is, <laughs> I don't know how they came up with uh, with some glove and what's his name, O.J. Simpson. They just come up with some that time and had a glove in front of everybody. But the way that you taste and smell something is subjective. The way that you see something is not because people can see the same thing and it mean the same thing. 
But the only thing that's integral to us is the way that we see, the way that we taste and smell. And some people that have hearing deficit, the way that they hear a sound, you know, because they have a hearing deficit. And also that was subjective if you are blind, then your seeing is subjective because you got another way that you got to see. You know, you can't see regularly. So anyway, I don't want to go on a long tangent, but what this is what I want to talk to you about. Taste is just the way that is perceived of something, whether it's sweet, bitter, or sour. Now, we're going to be eating all meat. We're only going to eat what's going to make us feel good, what tastes good to us. Cheese, meat, and fat. It's the natural three things that the, the body needs to build, to build and get nutrient fortified. We're going to be eating what's good to us. But at the same time, it's going to keep us fuller longer so that we don't have to eat these other things that we run to because we love the way it tastes. Oh, I love that. You know, some people use food for emotions to fill an emotional void. And that's why a lot of us are overweight. You can't use food for love. If you have to have love, you got to consider, I need to start dating because maybe I'm the type of person that don't need to be alone. I need to have a mate. You know, you got to consider other things. So us doing this eating situation, it's going to bring out a lot of different things. So that's what I'm going to be doing my live. Now, our next uh, definition is satiety, satiety, the feeling of being sated or satiated, satisfied. Oh, I just ate and I'm satisfied. I want you to feel satisfied. Get you, I want you can go to, go to the Dollar Tree and get these, not a big platter, but get you some platters so that when you eat your food, you can cut the food up and display it on there. And put you a side of sour cream or whatever you think, some pickles or butter if that's what you want. But I'm going to be showing you how to, to eat your food because being satisfied is not only tasting it and smelling it, but you want to look at something pretty on the plate. Because when you go out to eat dinner, they come out and they have it all displayed on the plate, right? It'd be a big plate. And you're like, is that for one person? It'd be like, it's for three people on a plate. So you have to get you a little salsa and say, oh my goodness, this is a lot. Because you, you try to sit there and eat it all. And, and that's what takes so long for dinner because the plates are so huge. So some people go out and they share a plate. They're like, let's, let's just share this because we know it's going to be huge. But that's the way restaurants do because they want a super huge tip. They want a tip. They keep coming over. You want water. You want this. You want that. But I won't be eating out uh, during this time. If so, it's going to be all meat. Whenever you eat out, it has to be meat. Order extra meat. Eat enough meat until you're satisfied and then say, well, let me take a box home and you put it up in the fridge and warm it up the next day for lunch. Okay, so satiated is the feeling of eating until you are full. You feel like, oh, I can't eat no more. I had enough. That's what you're going to be doing. Starting out. But now if you can't afford to buy that much food, another thing, I'm going to look up butchers in my neighborhood. You're going to need to find a good butcher that's going to chop you up some meat, whether they take your state uh, system uh, stamps or whatever you get, or whether they take, they're going to take your money. They're going to take your money. Go find you a good neighborhood butcher that's going to do well with chopping that meat. I'm going to give you some information about butcher, what to look for when you go into a good butcher. Um, the next thing is protein. This is the main reason why we're eating like this. You're not going to get this, but I'm going to tell you all of this. Protein translates itself into subunits. It, make, it breaks itself down into small units, and then it assembles together like a sandwich or a strand of messenger cells called mRNA. Then they attract tRNA cells, which are tethered amino acids. They attract the amino acid cells. 
okay, a long chain of amino acids emerge from this, which they decode into ribosomes, the mRNA sequence change into a polypeptide or a new protein. So I'm going to tell you what's going on. Have you ever seen in school where they got this thing like this, and then they got this here, and they got these little dots or whatever all around that cell like that? A protein cell is something like that like that. It, it, it makes itself into some cells and then it attracts some other cells. But anyway, the whole thing I want to tell you about is the protein is the building block of life. It's a building block. Now we have over 600 muscles. You think you only have two here, two or three here, a couple in your chest, a couple in your back, you got muscles all over. Even the thing that blink your eye, make your eyelid blink, it's a muscle. It's a muscle. Sometimes your eye can get to jicking like that by itself. It's a muscle in there. You have muscles in your face. You have muscles all over. And so protein builds each little strand of that muscle of each part of your body every part even your brain the most important thing your brain it builds the heart muscle it builds all of these organs in here so you need to eat the protein to build the muscle you don't need to eat something that's taken away you want to eat something that's giving you the nutrients you need when you rest you're going to rest well because you've been exercising you've been fasting you've been eating good meat good ruminant meat um <clears throat> now next thing i want to talk to you about i can't leave this out because it's important emotions you need to go in your prayer closet or get on your knees or just lay on the side of the bed when you wake up if something is bothering your heart or tugging at you, then you have to take it in prayer. Your emotions are things that you pray with. You go in prayer with to God. So, you know, emotions like you're happy, you're sorrow, you're sorrowful, you're worried, uh, you have a desire uh, of some kind about a temptation, you're tempted for something. Uh, all these are emotions emotions you must pray about when you when it come when you when you, when you sense it oh i'm tempted oh i got a i got a taste for something or some come on you lord help me in the name of jesus when some come on you just say god help me jesus help me yes that's an emotion that's a fleeting a fleeting desire a fleeting moment it's an emotion but you have control over those emotions fasting is going to help you have more self control now, Philippians 4, 6 to 7, it says, bring our concerns to God. Allow his peace and guidance to come to us. Get yourself, when you get a fleeting emotion to have a temptation or a desire or to do something or to eat something or a sorrowness or you're unhappy or you're worried or you have any, any kind of craziness, just an emotion, a fleeting thought or something. Capture your thoughts Say, Lord, I'm bringing this thought to you in prayer. I want to pray to you right now, God, because this is bothering me. And you can open your refrigerator and your emotions get to jumping. When you open, because if you have a son or a daughter like me, you got to cook for the other person and you're used to cooking and tasting something or you have the ability to sneak and grab some, but you're not. You're trying to discipline yourself. That's dealing with your emotions. Let me pray about this because I got to develop my self-will to be self-disciplined. I want my will. I want my will to be disciplined. I got to put it with the Lord Jesus. Give me strength. You know, put yourself some notes on there. Say, do not touch. This is the kids. This is mine. Do not touch. When you open the refrigerator, you got a note. The notes say, do not touch. I can't eat it. So that eliminates that thought, you know, put it in place. You got something in the pantry that you're looking at. You know, this is for the kids. This is for me. Do not touch. Put a note on it. Do not touch. And they're going to be asking, can I eat that? Because it say, do not touch. It's going to help them too. So you can say, I'll let you know when you can have a snack. You know, something like that. But you got it there for you because you don't want to touch it. Okay. You want to deal with these little fleeting emotions. Next thing, be careful what you think. 
This is what the Bible say. Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life and they guide your actions. You see what I'm saying? Now, people, emotions, when they think something, if they don't squash it right there, put it in prayer, get rid of oh, get away from me, the devil, get behind me. That's what Jesus said, get behind me, Jesus. I mean, get behind me, Satan. He quoted a scripture. You can get scriptures for things that you realize, I know I'm going to have a problem with. I know I'm going to have a problem with opening that refrigerator. And when I go to the store, I know I'm going to have a problem with not buying things that I'm not supposed to buy. You're supposed to empty out your refrigerator of stuff you don't want in there. You know, you still got, if you got smaller kids, you still got certain things you have to buy. You got to make sure they have the correct, right sugars in them too as well. And not a lot of, uh, grossed out uh, ingredients. But if I'm like, my son is an adult, so basically he can eat what I eat, but I, I still want him to have a snack, but he's only going to get some yogurt and some berries. You know, every now and then I might bake him a cookie, but I'm going to show you guys uh, how to use good chocolate morsels and good, good sugars and good flour. Let me give you a list of that for snacks and baking items. Okay. Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. Your thoughts run your life or guide your actions. So you don't want your emotions to run your life or guide your actions. So that's why you keep those emotions in prayer. Don't, don't use your mouth for lies, half-truths or untruths about anything or anyone. You know, people do this on a lot of jobs. They keep, oh, they did you hear this or did you say that? And they keep on keeping a ball of lies going and it could be very untrue. You know, so if you don't know something about a person or a situation, squash it because that's just you using your mouth the wrong way and you have to give an account to God for that. Keep your eyes focused on what's right and look straight ahead to what is good, to what is right and what is good. Okay, so I ended that on a Bible note. But the takeaway of this is, if you have some emotions and some feelings, some worries, sorrow and all of that, take that in prayer, okay? And we're eating high protein, we want it to stay satisfied, we want it to be tasty, and we want to use discipline when we're fasting. Discipline, remember, it's a virtue. It says it allows a person to exercise self-control, which is a fruit of the spirit and a subject of the Bible. It's a very vast subject of the Bible. It's so many things regarding discipline and self-control in the Bible. So I might pull out some of those for you guys. Okay, so I'm going to end it right there. Um, we want to eat tasty food, stay satisfied. We want to present it on a platter every time we eat. Get you a nice platter because you can eat as much as that food as you need in that one setting. If you can't eat it all, you can say, okay, I'm going to stick this in the fridge. I'll eat it tomorrow for, uh, for lunch. So continue your fast. Make sure you get your 64 ounces of water or just get as much water as you can work your way up, you know, get you a big water jug like this. So you don't have, because it was what I was doing. I was running to the uh, sink and, and running to my water thing over here. Keep drinking glass of water all day. Every hour I was running over there. But now when I get thirsty, I just come here and drink some water and get you one of these so you can count your activity and your steps. You can find these on Amazon or in Walmart and little stores that you're out in. You'll see them on sale for about $15. You don't have to have uh, this iPhone counter one. This is just a regular one. It does not connect no iPhone or nothing. Just a regular counter because the world is moving toward movement, not being sedentary. I don't want you to be sedentary because sedentary is bad for your heart, bad for your limbs, and it's going to allow you to accumulate fat because if you're not moving and circulating your body, you're sitting and that allows everything to just hang on to you. So, you know, that's why I, I get a little sleepy. I get up, I walk around or do something, get up, go to the store, walk down the street. I get up, find little things to do to keep myself busy because I know that I'm constantly moving. All right, guys.
I love you. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.